Right, on to the uh, Premier League. <laughs> Spurs host West Ham, Andy. Not a laughing matter. Both sides looking no. for those three points. Ange Postacoglu has said he's ready to explode after oh. almost two weeks dwelling on their 3-2 defeat against Brighton. It's a chance to put it right. He's got Barkley's in... blue balls. <laughs> he does, he does <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's obviously, uh, you know, a famous old encounter between these two friends. Often goalmongers. Goldmungus. Goldmungus. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's Goldmungus again. Do you? Mm. Yes, Nettastic. Do. Mm-hmm. do you hope it's Nettastic? Often Goldmungus sounds like something you want in your obituary, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, what do you think, Jim? Are, are we thinking goals galore in this? It does feel, if you go on sort of pre-international um, break form, it does feel like Spurs will be out to, um, you know, make up for what happened against Brighton. West Ham, you know, obviously they've been a little bit better of late, but um, they... They've had a rocky start to the season. Son's back. Richarlison should be on the bench. This this does screen goals, doesn't it? Early kickoff as well, so everyone's still waking up. <laughs> still waking up. Oh, well, that, everyone hates it, doesn't it? Twelve thirty. So, yeah. Well, yeah. there's yeah. a man who doesn't have children, <laughs> <laughs> um, and nor should he if you carry on like that. No, You're irresponsible, little sod. No intention of doing so. Um, well, thank goodness for that. Uh, well, look, West Ham, of course, line twelfth. Um, they have they've scored ten goals this season in seven games, which not the best, but not the worst. Mm. Um, a lot of talk about it, uh, it already, Peter, with lots of goals and and, and so on in well, this game. Well, West Ham kind of starts slowly and. How have done all season and Spurs I imagine will uh, come onto the field with a with a stern talking to from their from their manager. So. They like to start fast. I mean mm. again in that uh, North London derby they did start very fast. Mm. Uh, they were they were derided for that performance. Start less less fast and just keep a little back for the end. Do you think? And you won't lose three two. <laughs> Mind you though, what if they did that and actually they just sort of chugged around and never really got going? They think, ah, well, we didn't even have our fast start. <laughs> <laughs> Do your fast start, spread it out. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't mm. think it's the the, the worst. Uh, um, as you mentioned though. Um, um, Son Heung Min uh, would probably be back from from injury this weekend. I, do you know what? It passed me by that he's thirty two years old. Mm. Mm. Because with that with that um, style of play and uh, mm. and the pace and so on, I just think, oh yeah, I, with his boyish glamour. Well, there's yeah. that as well. But I just oh, bloody hell, yeah, age does it's, catch up to us all. Draft Andy. dodging. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, he, he didn't, uh, he that's didn't where the pace comes goal. in handy. He, well, he, 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 he won, he, they won the cup. They won they the, won the yeah. cup. That was well, the deal. Yeah, that the, was the deal. That deal was outrageous, wasn't it? Imagine yeah. if you were offered that deal. Yeah. You, you can, you, I, you I don't would have, have no to access to it. If you win the Euros. What a, and what fair a, play. What a YouTube channel that would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah well, it, was, it was the Asia Cup, wasn't it? That yeah, they won. Yeah. And, uh, mm. and then, yeah, he didn't have to be drafted. Which is brilliant, isn't it? Because if any government in this country brought back national servers which obviously none of us want and they said well if you win the Euros oh for crying out loud we're all, <laughs> exactly. well, we're all into it then aren't so we so are you, are you saying that's probably a better strategy than appointing Thomas Tuchel threatening mm. football players with the draft well, if I'm honest he's probably taken quite a few years off his uh, off his footballing life you would say Son young men because he probably played through a lot of injuries that he, he had just so he oh, could maybe. get there yeah. <laughs> yeah. well he got there, yeah, he Ima- got there. imagine they lose on penalties and then like the army just walk onto the pitch nope <laughs> <laughs> You knew what the deal was. Silver is not good enough. It's a bit like the Crystal Maze, isn't it? Uh, you want the golds will help you out, but yeah. the silver's just uh, that's going to hold you. That's going to going to make you it's fall a waste all of time. the way back. Yeah. Waste of time indeed. Um, Nicholas Fulkrug is is still out with a calf injury. It's annoying, isn't it? Yes. We've not been able to see West Ham go full Krug. Uh, the neutrals <laughs> have all wanted to see this, and yes. they've not really managed to get him on the pitch. Mm, we've barely seen half Krug, because he's played 63 minutes of Premier League football since joining, which is a shame, because we all thought... It's the third Krug. Yeah, OK, yeah, fair. But We all we, thought West Ham will find a way to break this excellent striker, and well, God damn it, if they haven't done the, it already. They've not had, <laughs> they've not had like, the chance like, to do it properly. Like, it's like their version of Chelsea and Andrei Shevchenko. It's sort of the apex of breaking strikers, isn't yeah. it? Mm, I, I mean, that's a, a very, yard. very particular example. There. Oh, but Chelsea have had trouble with that position. Yeah, they? Ch- Chelsea, actually... Chelsea are very good at breaking strikers. I don't know. Chelsea get a good tune out of a lot of strikers. They do, but, uh, all right, so for you, a season, then they you, leave. You yeah, but at, still, though, it's but, far different but, to West Ham. But, it, it's I, not I, that. It, it's it's not like, like a sort of more elite version of it. So you you probably say <laughs> Didier Drogba, Diego Costa... Um, Diego Costa, who succeeded despite himself because he was injured for most of the yeah, time. But he, still, but he still won the league and had sure, a great season. Sure, but they've had a lot but of strikers the in that period where they where, they, where it hasn't quite worked at Chelsea. I think it's a fair comparison. Even Adrian Muta, they've got a tune out for a bit. I'm saying that West Ham is... What, for five games? You're going back to a long time there, though, mm. right? 
Am I? Well, it was, well, wait, well, so Getting who, a tube out. I, I, I think this this conversation may be derailed into sort of pub talk. Well, because you're wrong. because I'm because I'm very but I'm very happy to do it. I mean, I think that Chelsea, yeah, they've had a few strikers, but I don't think it's comparable because you've just, I mean, in in the term of drug burning, because I mean, they haven't had Marco Bugas. Oh, really, Andy? You're playing that? <laughs> yeah. right. Maybe that's where it started. Right. I am. You want to go retro? Let's go really yeah. retro. All right. You know, um, Mark Steen and Paul Furlong, I thought, did all OK. <laughs> where does this end, Andy? <laughs> yeah, it I mean, ends with, nobody, with all of us in the gutter. The stadium's been completely rebuilt and they've won a couple of European Cups and it's all down to them. I think, Andy, that uh, if, if we carry on like this, we all end up in, in the gutter covered on, in Pete's off. excrement. But either don't bring my excrement into it. I've got a lovely little poo. Um <laughs> I would but you've say, used that up. I would say Look, that well, you're like, right. You're right. Look where we are immediately. <laughs> Fair play, usually, Marcus. All is forgiven. You would usually, uh, you would usually kind of like look at an international break and sort of go, oh, well, maybe West Ham can kind of like get a couple of players back. But mm. um, it's come at a pretty crappy time for them because they, they they were tra- starting to show mm. a bit of decent play. Yeah, that big that big like, win. Mm. Exactly. Well, I mean, the, they've got an apology out of Mohamed Kudus. Right, yes. so that's something. Yeah, okay, yeah, because obviously he had a big bust up with Lopetegui. Was it against mm. Brentford where he w- was taken off at half time, mm. and uh, it, it was all it was all a bit uh, nasty. And I think that is really the key for them, isn't it? I mean, defensively they he were had to be m- held that, back. Yes, well, defensively they were much worse than the numbers suggested last season, mm. um, and that eventually came home to roost. But I, I think. Their defence will get better. You know, you look at the fact they brought in Tadebo. Things things will change and, and, and they will get better. But we can talk about Fulkrug in the front half of the pitch. But the reality is, if they get the best Kudus out there, that will make an enormous mm. difference. Well, it them. will. And we know what a quality player he is. And he had to apologise to the Ghana fans as well, because they crashed out of qualification for the Africa Cup of Nations with a defeat against Sudan. So, I mean, Ghana, um, on the international front, struggling, of course. Mm. Uh, very poor um, AFCON last time round, and they haven't even got there this time. And I think maybe... Better the devil you know, we hooting. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, but I think with Kudus, it's it's all, you know, at the moment in, in his career, it's not looking very rosy at all but he did do a very full apology to everybody concerned and hopefully for West Ham's sake that will get him going again because you're right Andy they they need him um, because he's a quality player but I, I mean I go back to when I saw Fulham play West Ham early in the season and, and players like him and you you see for a moment where he picks up the ball and drives and you go mm. oh blimey there he, oh nothing mm. it's as if, it's as if that there's a, a very small amount of energy in it there it feels as if they're sat. past that doesn't it it's strange and um i i think yeah but you you're right to say peter that they they have certainly um improved a little bit uh, because we were we were talking about Lopetegui thinking blimey you know is he is he going to last um that much longer so they've got a real chance here because this would be a, a huge victory for them it's fair to say they always like beating spurs uh, and yes, spurs yeah. as we know jim can be got at. They they always get themselves up for this, don't they, West Ham? And mm. we know that you know Spurs play in a, a very um, kind of um, gung ho way. Uh, so there will be a chance. You would think for for Bowen and Kudus and those sort of players to to do some damage there. So like this is it's just excellent programming. This is exactly the fixture you want at the twelve thirty kickoff. I yeah. completely agree. And and as well the, the Spurs with that gung ho style, I, th- that's what I think they probably should do as well because mm. that's it. Like just go at them because that's their strength and if you can just pin them back you're, the, in, li- you're think... the little devil on Ange Postacoli's shoulder aren't more you more Ange just more. do it yeah. do it oh, be yourself but helping. more would well, you not think that's what they should do in this particular fixture <laughs> well I think that's what they will do I'm, I'm not necessarily sure if it's what they should do in, in this fixture and coward. going forward I, th- I think there's well, I'm not coaching Spurs it doesn't make any difference to me I think the problem is if you I think both teams are deluded quite frankly <laughs> <laughs> if, if you if you look at this Spurs are in a, a really tricky spot at the moment because on paper great form leading into this game against Brighton as Postacoli said he was absolutely infuriated by it and he was, he was visibly quite angry and you know he's someone who manages to put things into perspective quite nicely but he was he was visibly furious after that he's had no time really to work with the players in that time since because of course they've all been off on international duty and he's shown he's not for turning he wants to do things the same way again and again and again now I think there's a limit to how far Tottenham can go under this model okay he's great it's great that they've got past the whole Conte, Mourinho thing, and the club's not shrouded in misery and all the rest of it. But 
I've had. It's, I think Spurs fans are quite split because some Spurs fans are still really on board with it, and they're like, "Remember the first half of last season? We're absolutely brilliant. We're only a couple of points away from Champions League qualification, and we've got a better team this season, so we're going to be able to make the top four. But I think you have to look at last season as the two distinct halves. The fact that they started so brilliantly, and when it started to fall apart he didn't really have the answers for it. Mm. And he still doesn't really seem to have the answers for it. Now, I would be staggered if they make the top four this season. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you'd look at this match this time last year and sort of go, well, there's a cigarette paper between um, Spurs and, and West Ham, but Spurs are just a lot quicker. But they don't seem to be using the advantages that they've kind of, the God-given advantages that they've got mm. uh, when they're coming up against teams. So you, you, it'll probably just be a one-all draw. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, so the message is don't bother watching it. Don't bother watching yeah. it. Yeah, why, why would Throw you? your telly in the bin. Yeah, fair. <laughs> You don't have to go that far. Well, just a different channel. Yeah, new telly. I'm yeah. trying. I'm trying to spurn this spur this economy on. Okay, all right. right. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. you've Try often done that. You've yeah. often done that. Much to its fill up um, the landfill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So much to the telly. economy's detriment. We're to shoot um, men. Did you the see the, the, the <laughs> that former Spurs manager Mauricio Pochettino lost his uh, first? Uh, he lost for the first time. Sorry, as US manager, Mexico beat them in a, in a friendly two nil. Raúl Jiménez of Fulham. a goal and the Verge <laughs> uh, scored an absolute. Luke Peach, didn't he? Yes, roll him and his my goodness, Andy. Can they can More they not play Panama every week? <laughs> Th- there is a petition really? going yeah. around <laughs> uh, to make sure that they are automatically qualified for the World <laughs> Cup. Um, so, uh, so yeah, poor, poor old Poch. All right, coming up after this, Nottingham Forest are looking for a new social media manager. See you in a moment. Hi, I'm Danny Welbeck, and you're listening to the Football Ramble. Oh, it warms your cockles, doesn't oh, it? Like it does. Rams like Welbs. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got that, you know. Did you? Yeah. You shouldn't I, be allowed near... England stars. Why? Because <laughs> you're just weird to them. <laughs> you're just ever so strange with them. Go on then. <laughs> you are. Carry on. Just a bit, you just get too, too keen. Too Says keen. the man who's got too currently touchy. a massive erection. <laughs> right. It's not for that, it's for the bet builder. Liverpool versus Chelsea. Boner builder, more like. <laughs> on Sunday at 4 30. It's top versus fourth. Oh, hey. The, it's going to be a good one, this. The endless battle, Peter. <laughs> Liverpool versus Chelsea. Both teams in form. Yeah, you think a lot so? Of form. Have Chelsea surprised you this season, Peter, with Enzo Moresca doing his stuff and them looking reasonably cohesive? Well, bearing in mind, it's not that cohesive behind the scenes. Well, considering I predicted them to win the league last season, I'm fucking annoyed, if I'm completely honest. <laughs> really? You thought <laughs> you should one of my got... ramble predictions. Okay. Yeah. What about this season? Where have I you think, got them? I think they're, they're, they've been um, inexplicable excellent. I think uh, Moresca's mm. kind of um, navigated some really, really big uh, PR, po- potential PR pitfalls. Yes. Uh, slash sinkholes. And uh, yeah. They've, they've and they've got Cole out. Palmer. And they've got, and they've got Cole Palmer. <laughs> Don't forget him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and if all else fails, Cole Palmer. Yeah. Give the ball to Coley. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it, it's uh, it's an intriguing one, Andy. These sides know each other very, very well. It, it, there's a slight They should of... do. They've been playing each other forever. You'd think so. You'd <laughs> it think feels so. like that. <laughs> um, what have Moresca and Co got to do to get the better of slots lot? Well, I think this is a massive test for them because you're right, Chelsea have been really encouraging this season. Um, of course, as you say, Palmer is a, a, a massive, massive part of that. But um, Liverpool have been really impressive so far. Mm. So if Chelsea can go there and, you know, I would say get a result, but play well. And play cohesively. Are they going to I, use the Nottingham Forest blueprint from this season? Yeah, yeah, possibly. It's not the worst of ideas. I mean, I mean, they won't, though, will they? I, I think you look at the way they're going to play, and I think it's interesting. If we go right back to the beginning against Manchester City, when they played Manchester City mm-hmm. on the first game of the season, even though they lost that, I thought it was a really presentable Chelsea mm-hmm. performance, and you could see the thinking behind it and what they were trying to do mm. so I think you want a similar version of that but better and hopefully yielding a result if if you're Chelsea because I think you still have to be honest and say that the best three teams in the league by some distance are Manchester City Arsenal and Liverpool and so if Chelsea can even push themselves towards that bracket mm-hmm. I think that's a, a really positive thing I think the other thing of course we were talking about the, the top four before with those three being quite a lot better than the rest, and I, I do include Liverpool in that, it means that there should be a really 
massive bun fight for fourth. And there's no reason that Chelsea can't be involved in that. Oh, well, they're currently fourth, Jim. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, um, as Andy sort of hinted at, this is probably Liverpool's biggest test yet, you would say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of the That's teams they've faced, uh, even though it is at home. Yeah. And teams in farm as well. Not always yeah. at Old Trafford, obviously. <laughs> well, no, no, I'm saying, yeah, obviously. Exactly, yeah, no, yeah. Gen- genuinely. Um, I think it's maybe gone under the radar a little bit what an amazing season Virgil van Dijk is having. Mm-hmm. He's he's kind of up there with his best form for Liverpool at the moment. He's, he's really, really mm. kind of... It works with, you know, under slot, whatever they're doing. And he's given himself an extra bit of time off with quite literally one of the stupidest red cards I ever saw away at Hungary yeah. in the first mm. game. So he didn't have to play the second well, one for the yeah. Netherlands. He's, he's so you're, de- you're delighted if you're on he's, a slot, aren't he's, you? He's a yeah. smart, smart man. Um, Chelsea, obviously, are pretty rampant going forward. We know that. And they've got lots of options. They will mix it up. They'll try and make it difficult for Liverpool. And it'll be an interesting test of that midfield, I think, because as we've we've touched on a few times, you know, Liverpool don't really have a traditional defensive midfielder in 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 the first team very often because he doesn't he doesn't seem to play Endo that much. So it'd be interesting to see if Chelsea target that area. But there's a lot of industry in sure. the midfield, oh, absolutely. which, which it, it's not it, like they're lacking for the um, yeah. Th- you know the the tactical nous in that position. It's it's a weird thing. I I feel that sometimes in in big games for Liverpool, it it does look like a gaping mm. hole. That that lack mm-hmm. of a number six. And if there was a game that you had to pick, where it's maybe going to cost them, well, it's the Cole Palmer spot, isn't it? Ooh. Yeah. So it might, that might end up as a in, really intriguing battle between Ryan Gravenberch, who is fantastic at hanging on hanging onto the ball, mm. and Cole Palmer, who's just you know the brilliant little maestro that we know he is yes very true well um, gentlemen uh, could we see Trent Alexander-Arnold doing his thing where he steps into midfield and helping out deal with Cole Palmer almost certainly almost certainly have you heard that Real Madrid have made him a priority target Mm. Jude wants a friend where are they going to play him (laughs) yeah Yeah, that is true Jude doesn't Uh, want a friend he wants that friend yeah Yeah. he does want that they are really good mates aren't they Mm. well reports have been bubbling away since the summer and Liverpool are now um, reportedly beginning to uh, Except the fact that he will leave the club. I mean, if Real Madrid come a knocking, Peter. Yeah, I mean, you it's hard of, to turn them down. You sort of wonder how how long has he got on his uh, contract? Because I mean, I think it's, well, he'll be um, out of he's... contract in the summer, so he can oh, right, sign sorry. up. Okay, can... sorry, right. you can do pre mm. pre contract stuff anyway. Uh, but uh, so it's it's going to be quite cheap, then, isn't it? It's <laughs> it's very quite cheap. affordable. <laughs> um, that's not how Trent's agent will see it. No, <laughs> <laughs> there'll be a lot of words like amortized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's yeah. currently buying a football club, so just cough up. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth Bale was on that much. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, well within, that was within, a long time ago. Inflation. <laughs> Nah, I think we can. Can he be... take free kicks? Yeah, I can. Okay. Yeah. No. Well, I think with, with the injury to Danny Carvajal, if you're Real Madrid, you are on the phone to him on January the first, or possibly a little bit sooner, mm. trying to get that over the line, aren't you? Mm. Very <laughs> different, different fullbacks, but you're right. It's still, yeah, but still yeah, yeah, there. very different, but same position. Yeah. 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 And oh. In Conor Bradley as well, you wonder if Liverpool will even bother to replace no, it. Yeah. Maybe well, they just I mean, promote him he's a very would, good player. It would be gutting if, well, if, as we're, we're talking, they don't get a fee for him considering... Look, he's a not gone. Boo-hoo. A boo-hoo. Liverpool boo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? I can't broadcast. I'm crying too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if they, if they, did... we got money. We can't spend it, Marcus. I was going to say if they, if, if they were in the. Look... What's the point in getting money anymore? If you they... can't spend it. If they yeah. did want, you can't more money. even invest in the city like you said you would. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to invest in the city. That's what Stavely said. They're going to invest in mm. the city. They didn't invest in the city. What's happened to all that money? Mm. If they want more money, where can they find it, Peter? <laughs> I don't know. In the hearts of every child in the city. Really? Yes. Okay, fine. Uh, Well, um, there have been tensions, though, rising between Liverpool, uh, Chelsea and Manchester United youth academies. Scouts from both Liverpool and Manchester United have been denied access for games at Chelsea, apparently. Although... Some are suggesting this, some are saying... Nah, yeah, not really Chelsea themselves have denied this, it's worth... Have they, Jim? Up, they not have, room on they? the touchline because there's so many players? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, this is, uh, of course, that um, you know the way things have gone in recent years and changing of um, rules and laws and so on, that uh, any, you can go and scout anywhere across the country mm. now if you have the... Um, you know, the, Well, the number one... Aca- what the scout pass. A, a, a level one academy, is that yes. how they work? Yeah. Right. So, which, of course, these clubs do. Right. And... Uh, they, 
there was a bit of a ruckus. Uh, the, the, the young man, the Chelsea player, um, young Rio, went from Chelsea to Liverpool in the summer. Sixteen-year-old, and Man United were looking at him, and right, yeah. And well, there's a bit of a standoff with this sort oh, of scary thing. Is it going to be like rival schools? Like yeah, fights on the school field kind well, of it, vibes. It's quite funny, isn't it? Though, if you're, I don't know, say a you know a, a Liverpool scout, and mm. you want to go and watch Chelsea youth against Man United, yeah. it's like, why are you here? Well, we know why you're yeah, here. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, not yeah, in yeah, our yeah. interest. I'm surprised that it was as open as this, anyway. Well, I mean, I suppose it's not in their interest. I mean, if, if you've got so many players, you know, you can make a little bit of money here sure. and there. But, but well, I understand. But I, I think this is it, isn't it? I mean, that's the thing. Why you're here? Why are you watching all these fifteen-year-old boys? Well, I'm a scout. I'm a scout. It's the thing to say, isn't it? Yeah, but they genuinely are scouts. Okay, I know, I know. It's I know, really, really crucial that I <laughs> that I say that. It is utterly crucial for everybody <laughs> involved, <laughs> from us to them. That they are accredited <laughs> scouts. Why are you watching those fifteen-year-old boys? It's not a question of what you need to hear in your life. Life, is Gordon it? bloody Bennett. Oh, God. Um, so anyway, good, what I was good luck to everybody to say, involved in that. <laughs> um, was that I think this has become a lot more. Like, essentially, academy players have become a lot more high profile recently mm-hmm. because of the kind of pure profit farming we've been seeing, and I think clubs have an eye on that as a mm-hmm. as a revenue stream as well as a way to get talented players younger. Yeah. Um, and what there's been a knock on effect of, of that that I think is really negative, which is that. You get players like young Rio Ungamoa, mm. who, um, you know, when, when he made that move, Fabrizio Romano reported on it. And that became a lot more common in this summer in particular, where very, very young players mm. were sort of thrust onto his feed. Got a lot of followers, a lot of influence. It's a big thing. The Guardian do uh, a huge article every year of like the, the kind of really Most exciting young there. players mm. to look yeah. out for. And then in a couple of years, they, they do a thing where it's like, where are they now? And barely any of them have, have, yeah. have made it through it. Because and that just, is football. Yeah. Because that is football. Yeah. I just wonder how um, damaging that might be for a lot of those players. This this kind of this raising profile of players of that age. I don't think there's much of a duty of care. Um, but more than more than there the media, was. Really, I, I suppose that's the trade off, isn't isn't it? Really, the, the the fact that there's more of a sense of they need to be rounded people because ninety percent of them won't make it, or ninety yeah. percent plus of them won't make it. But there's increased scrutiny and part of that as you say Jim I think the key part of that is because of the way the clubs do business and like if you're looking at the transfer market in general buying potential is almost worth more than playing football b- 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 yeah <laughs> buying actual players who you know are going to do it yeah. and are, are actually m- mature so it is it's almost it is more like Sort of asset trading than ever before, really. Isn't Chelsea it? is, is n- nowadays just um, the Glen Hoddle Academy, isn't it? Really, you know yeah. that you know that uh, football team. Yeah. Got, why doesn't Why doesn't Glen Hoddle enter the league as a team with all that promise? Uh, there's a lot George Hardy r- did it in uh, Romania, didn't he? Did he? What? Yeah, he, he did. He, he like invented his own academy club. Oh, and then just entered the league. That, they won the league. There we wow. go. Uh, one argument Liverpool didn't win was, of course, all that uh, uh, controversy last season when VAR failed to overturn an incorrect decision to um, disallow a Luis Diaz goal against Spurs. Now, Howard Webb has claimed that mistakes are down 80% this season with regard to VAR. Unfortunately for him, no one is actually going to check that number. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to. Can I we var var, is what you're saying. Yeah. 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 We're also seven games in. Mm, Still, so, no. Well, right. compared to this time last I, season, I, I, I okay. agree. Don't, it has okay. been better. Don't hasn't be it? naughty, Jim. Give <laughs> no, them credit. I, I was ingenuous. simply mistaken. It's not Don't the be same. cruel. It wasn't okay. malicious. Okay. Well, he said the average delay has come down a lot. This is encouraging. He said it was seventy seconds per game this time last season. Now it's twenty-five seconds. Mm. So something we can all uh, mm. celebrate there. Um, he said um, Howard Webb was when when talking to the refugees. He said I said to the guys, "Don't ponder for too long. If you see a situation that jumps off the screen, uh, you then get." involved but if you're having to think about it too much and analyse it too many times then just say check complete because we'll leave it with the referee on the field he did say that he thought the Bruno's, uh, Bruno Fernandes sorry, sending off against Spurs at Old Trafford was the wrong decision which was one of two yeah. uh, it's a step in the right owned. direction isn't it oh, I, I mean, from, from 70 seconds to 25 yeah. seconds you see and we knew this would be the case I mean when, when Wolves were on the end of some bad decisions last season they were like right let's have a let's have a referendum on this and they lost 19 to 1 it's yeah. quite clear what clubs think of this apparently a poll was done in 4 out of 5 football fans said they would keep VAR you're going to keep it mm. because it does make the game better it just makes Great it more time annoying to, to do some texting <laughs> what's that texting right. it's just more time to do some texting while the VAR checks on the things you think of <laughs> oh, you <laughs> have, have a little look at your phone <laughs> have a little look at your phone take in some <laughs> adverts boost the economy <laughs> Marcus you, back you, Britain I thought you meant the referee <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> he could do a bit of texting if he wanted yeah but I got when you said back Britain I was on board <laughs> right um, but, yeah so I, I look it, it makes the game, it makes decisions 
more accurate. But as I say, it just makes it even more infuriating when they're wrong. Yeah. So yeah. to try and reduce that, I think we're going in the in the right direction. Also, I think sometimes you know supporters disagree with a with a decision, um, and blame VAR. And it's simply that you know VAR didn't agree with them, so therefore VAR mm. is wrong. And I think a lot of the a lot of the decisions that will have been considered correct, a lot of fans might disagree with. It's, it's just how it goes. It's it? like Jose and his laptop, isn't it? Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, except stuff. nowhere near as good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, indeed. Um, now, during the international break, Nottingham Forest were fined seven hundred and fifty thousand pounds for a tweet back in April that claimed uh, that the VAR for their defeat against Everton uh, was a Luton Town fan. We all remembered it, mm. uh, and we all enjoyed it for the wrong reasons. Well, Forrest have now placed an advert for a new senior social media manager. <laughs> um, and club insiders have insisted that the timing is entirely coincidental. The other I mean, one's be... having some time off after a <laughs> boating accident. If, if, I mean, if you sort of look at how like how much is a social media manager getting each year, you know, you, 50 grand plus. Probably. Not bad, not bad. Not bad, not bad. Little, but th- they are going to take a, a few seasons to recoup that amount of money. Mm. I mean, it's an astonishing... Because it's not even like... Um, yeah, it's a fine from from mm. the presumably the Premier League, but um, it's a surely that's a libel. Surely that'd be cheaper than the libel case. I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, Lawyers are expensive. Here's the fine. Pay it for that's mm. the end of it. It's, it's just amazing to me that this hasn't happened before. And I think mm. the size of the fine is is really really important mm. because. And I think really the issue is that the official mouthpiece of football clubs, which is what Twitter and social media accounts are, mm. should not be speaking like fans should not be dealing in banter they should be dealing in 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 facts and you know it's the sort of I know football is generally terrible with conflicts of interest (laughs) but this is one that has been allowed to roll and roll and roll Mm -hmm. and maybe this can draw a line under it do you feel that they're being made an example of not, well, that, that suggests that the... Sorry. Something needs to be done, though. Yeah. Well, I mean... <laughs> like like, like the, the same sort of mouthpieces that are um, submitting like memos about, um, you know, the club says this about VAR and stuff like that, mm-hmm. which, uh, fine. You can't go down to, you know, Everton having to go to fucking Anthony Gordon, for example. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's, just, it's just a real muddy kind of banter mess, really, that, that we just don't need. And we don't need another banter mess. Well, it, it certainly will, um, you know, line the pockets of a few lawyers, I imagine. Who will here it? and there? Because they do very well, the lawyers, don't they? Mm. <laughs> imagine if Anthony Gordon sued Everton. They were mean to me, your ex. It's like, well done for using the, its proper name, Jim. Yeah, by yeah. the way, you know, he's know worked hard on. to rebrand that, so we should respect it <laughs> and him in general. Uh, he's such a brilliant man. Coming up after this, Brentford are back at Old Trafford. <laughs> Yes, everybody. Manchester United host Brentford on Saturday, 3 p.m. Eric Ten Hag survived the international break and he will put his wits against Thomas Frank, who, of course, was heavily linked in the summer. Can't get away from this, can he? No. Mm. Can't do it. He'll put his defences uh, against Thomas Frank because uh, Eric Ten Hag, is, Ten Hag is very much kind of... He's in his bunker. Do you think <laughs> so? Uh, you know, last last days of his little empire <laughs> worrying about things. <laughs> last days of his little empire. His little empire. His little Ten Hag empire. Uh-huh. And he's like, well, I'll, I'll be out the door soon. Do you think so? It'll all be over. I. He, seems a, little bit, he seems a little bit more defiant than that. Yeah. I yeah, would be publicly, it, outwardly, would, inside. I bet he's going. I just want to go on holiday. It would be great, though, wouldn't it, if a manager was a bit more like that? Yeah, but look, I'm a, I'm a dead man walking, but I'm not. I'm not walking. <laughs> well, look against Brentford. I promise you, we will give it a go. We will, we will yeah. give it a go. <laughs> I will actually, field eleven it? players. Yeah, <laughs> like he's more relaxed. He's not <laughs> because we see managers really get very prickly, understandably yeah. so, because everyone's like, "Hey, you crap, you're going to get sacked," and I understand why that yeah. would piss There'll someone be off. Another match next week. I'll have a bag of money in my hand. I mean, what's, <laughs> what's not to love? So m- maybe the, maybe the way to engineer this is for every interview, be it a press conference or a pre-match conference or a post-match match conference, the, the managers mm. get a little truth serum. Yes. So they're just like, oh, we are, little lie gotta be honest, mm. we are dreading this. Yeah. <laughs> they keep scoring in the first minute. We've got nothing for that. We've got nothing. Well, players I think hate me, it. I hate them and they're all shit. <laughs> I think that's it. With where Man United are at the moment and where Brentford are at the moment, do you remember when um, Brian Lara broke the World Test bat- batting record? I do. And in the middle of the match, it was always a bit weird. To, to congratulate him, there was a big 
sort of gala almost right. in the middle of the match where everyone ran on and shook yeah. his hand and all the rest of it. And you think, well, I understand you've broken a record, but you can just get on with the match. Yeah. Maybe if United get to five minutes without conceding a goal, Have a bit you know, of that, yeah. all, all, the, all the old boys can come yeah. and start coming on, on it, yeah. <laughs> shaking Matthias you... De Ligt by the hand and you did it. Uh. Bruce, you've got three o'clock. What are you doing? Are you, are you... From a Ten Hag perspective, they're always talking about positivity and stuff. What could be more positive are than you that? Gonna yeah. give them, are you going to give them five minutes, do you reckon? Three? <laughs> <laughs> three, you reckon three? Okay. What any, any advances on three? No, I, 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 surely the early goal thing is over now. Surely, surely, uh-huh. surely, Jim. <laughs> um, maybe I can feel week. the warmth of how hard you're brushing your fingers and <laughs> hands together. <laughs> well, Brentford, of course, are three places above Manchester United mm. in the league. Um, and they're, uh, you know, they've, 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 they've been entertaining. They've been entertaining. Not, not that many points, of course, Brentford, but they're still they're doing okay. And uh, we've we've enjoyed those early starts. But yeah, I, like it wouldn't shock me if, if Manchester United had all their players camped out on the edge of their box yeah. for that yeah. first five minutes. And as well, they, they're on a bit of a hide into nothing, aren't they? Because if they win this game, it's like, well, it's Brentford at home. Of course, you should win this, you mm. dickheads. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, I mean, this, is, is this all just um, payback for what they did? <laughs> <laughs> all those wins and so on. Uh, of course, uh, fortunately, um, uh, Alex Ferguson isn't there anymore um, at all, but we'll come yeah. on to that in just a moment. Um, now, did you see, gentlemen, if we sort of depart Manchester United for just a moment, former uh, Man United man Paul Pogba has had his ban reduced to 18 months after appeal, meaning he can play again in March 2025. Of course, it's not that new news, this um, training permitted uh, from January. And Paul Pogba has been um, interviewed, as you would imagine, after this news. And he spoke recently about his relationship with Jose Mourinho at Manchester United. He said, our relationship was like boyfriend and girlfriend. We were breaking up and making up all the time. I don't know why it turned into a nightmare and us fighting, because I wasn't fighting. I didn't start the fight. If I see him tomorrow, it's a big hug. But one day we will have to sit down together and discuss it. Reminder that Mourinho once called him a virus in front of the squad. Yeah, <laughs> he's kind of... Mourinho's often had relationships like this with players throughout his career, isn't he? Like, he... um. You know, he, he used to poke Mario Balotelli a lot into, didn't he, to sort of get stuff out of him. And yeah. I think they had a that is sort of quite kind of father and son relationship at times, but it wasn't without, you know, these these little moments of friction. But of all the players you could have picked, Jim. <laughs> to be Balotelli had that, had that everywhere, you know. True. I, I, think, true. I, think, I think Pogba's interesting because a li- little like maybe Ica Casillas uh, at Real Madrid is a classic Mourinho tactic of confront the biggest boy in the playground. You think it's that and it's yeah. not. And I, I always read it as like, you know, he knows what a talented player Pogba is, but for some reason they weren't quite getting the best out of him. So he's trying to maybe provoke a response from him. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose it depends which way you look at it. Is like Pogba alone responsible for the fact that he doesn't perform as, as well as he might? Or is it a Manchester United and to an extent a Mourinho thing that they make him the most expensive player in the world and never mm. build the team around him? Yeah, sure. <laughs> we see Pogba end up in Turkey. They, they could be reunited. That that feels like oh, yeah. uh, that oh, feels yeah. like a marriage made in uh, heaven, surely. I mean, yeah, John Joe Shelby must be must be shitting himself <laughs> at a <AM> sport, <laughs> thinking, yeah, oh, that's a, that's a bit of me. He's going to have my spot. But I, I, I don't know. To, to to me, the the dream ticket. And Pogba also said in in the interview he did in France, he said, I, I still think I can get back in the France team if I'm not playing in Europe. That, that to me says MLS. And if you think about it, the the timing really syncs up because if you think he can train at the end of the year, he can come back in March. And that means if you're going by a European timetable, at least for the moment, this season is, is pretty much a write-off. He's not going to be ready to play straight mm-hmm. away in March, having not played for nearly two years. So, And where would he play, though? So I, I think LAFC is the one. And if you look at the fact that Antoine Griezmann, is, is, they're really interested in him and he's quite interested in them, you could end up at LAFC with Loris, Giroud, Pogba, Griezmann. On fucking jaw. <laughs> Imagine that. Mm, although I think Saudi's more likely, Andy. You oh, yeah. why? Money, 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 money. Well. Because <laughs> um, he's, he's there as well. Answer. Yeah, he's there as well. Um, well, we, sh- we shall see. Anyway, back to the cut and thrust of the Premier League, Manchester United and, and Brentford. Um, I, one can forget that Brentford have got a fair few injuries um, at the moment. Uh, Wisser being one of them, uh, of course. He's got a late fitness test. If he, if he played, that would be a boost for them. But with Brian and Bummer in such uh, early goal-scoring uh, form in the season, it's something we've come to expect from him, Jim, but you wouldn't put it past him. 
scoring an overhead kick, a penalty, something like that. No, sure. He's absolutely capable of scoring a goal in a football match. Mm. <laughs> is that what I'm getting out of you on, Brian? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, he's having a really, really good season, isn't he? He's, he's he been starts one of the, the season. sparks of it. He does this. He starts the season like he's one of the best players in the world. It's yeah. crazy. But he's needed to because if you think they're post-Tony and the guy they signed to replace Tony, Igor Julio, is not fit until the end of the year. Which is ha- having looked quite good in pre-season. But, um, it was the same that Wiss is not there. Because, yeah. Yeah, they're no, a lovely duo, aren't they? Yeah. We really saw that really nice. starting to flourish last season. But you, but you're right, because it's more than goals with Embroimo, isn't it? I think he shoulders that burden really, really well for and Brentford. Defenders. And he's a really he good shoulder defender for defenders him as well. Very much so, yeah. <laughs> do, do you think that the kind of um, England changes kind of logged up, sorry, jammed up the log jam uh, once more? Because there was rumours that Thomas Frank was going to replace Pep if Pep took the England job. Now with England having uh, Thomas Tuchel. Thomas Frank at Man City? Yeah. I didn't hear so. that. Well, I heard that no, a few times. No, I've heard that a few times. No. Yeah. No? Okay, all right. Fine. Is that all I'm getting out of you? Right, okay, no. Yeah. <laughs> fine, fine, okay. Uh, Thomas Tuchel can, can never can never manage Manchester City. Clip you said that. Thomas what time Frank. is it? What? What did I you say? You said Thomas Frank. I did say Thomas Frank. You did. What did I say at the start? You just said Thomas Tuchel. Yeah, all right. I meant Thomas Frank. Thomas hang Frank. On, you said Thomas, Brentford. I wait, said wait, Thomas Frank at the start because that's what I'm talking right, about. Okay. Thomas Tuchel has taken the England job, yeah. which means Pep Guardiola is not going to take the England job, which means he will remain in a job at Manchester City. I'm right? frightened. So but Thomas like Frank, as well. Thomas Frank <laughs> can't take the Man City job because he can't have two managers. That's the rules. Okay, when you say that Pep Guardiola <laughs> will stay in his job, it yeah. suggests that Man City were umming and ahhing about him. Well, if Pep Guardiola's got one foot out of the uh, Manchester City dugout, you would hope that mm. they would have some kind of succession plan, and Thomas Frank apparently was in the frame. Well, at the start of this chat with Manchester United Ooh. and Brentford, we spoke about Thomas Frank being linked to the Man United job. Right, okay. You've just invented a link. No, I haven't. Between the the this very, is, this very... Is, this, is, this is like the whole... Um, uh, which team did I say starts that uh, drops off Wales drops off uh, rather a lot and everybody questioned me but I will be proved right okay Thomas I mean, Frank will never manage Manchester City I've Googled right, Thomas cool. Frank to right. Man City and it's all stuff about Eric Ten Hag so. <laughs> yeah because he spoke about maybe something happens Thomas Frank insists he is happy at Brentford but will not rule out leaving in an exclusive interview uh, with it's uh, a where uh, to uh, where uh, to where well to where exactly yeah Manchester mm. Mm. <laughs> Manchester mm. okay uh, <laughs> right, yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, the only place we can go now is is to Richard <laughs> Keyes. Um, he slammed. Well, the man who knows his stuff. <laughs> knows his onions. He slammed Sir Jim Ratcliffe <laughs> for killing Manchester United after Sir Alex Ferguson was dismissed as an ambassador. Now we spoke about this. Of course, it was it seemed like a fairly mutual yeah. uh, decision. And as yes. you said, Jim, he probably thought, oh, "Thank goodness I don't have to go every week now." Yeah. Uh, so Richard Keyes <laughs> doesn't seem to have got that memo. Mm. Keyes also recently claimed that he'd watched every Premier League game in some form or another since 1992. I mean, if you're talking about highlights, Richard, then I mean that is possible. Although I would probably... that, that, to be fair to him, which you know I hate to be, yeah, uh, he, he did clarify that it's, it's quite that strongly, by saying in one form or another. It's quite strongly caveated, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. TikTok. What's yeah. it all on TikTok? <laughs> yeah. But Jim, it's your Friday as well. You don't have to be fair to no, him. That's true. That's true. I watch them all through the window of a lover's house. You know what? I mean, Richard Keyes <laughs> is a cautionary tale, right? Mm. But yeah. he is the sort of person who is so stubborn and has so much, um, you know, um, hubristic professional pride. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if this was actually true. Right. If he has made himself watch some sort of highlight of every game yeah. to yeah. the detriment of anyone around him. Um, <laughs> to in, prove he's in been a part of it all. Moments. It's, yeah, a, it's an incredible sentence. What though, are they doing it? in my Premier League? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's an amazing sentence though because <laughs> it's such a contrast. It's such a going hard for the first seven words mm. and then completely changes in the last four because you know so open to interpretation maybe a lot of those games that he hasn't actually seen Teletext uh, and, yeah or Andy Gray's <laughs> drawn him a picture yeah of, of what happened look at this Richard he's scoring a goal <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, lovely stuff well I'm so excited to say right it's time for Jackson's Encyclopedia. What? What? Encyclopedia of football. What? An encyclopedia of football. 
I don't know what that means. Marcus, what the hell is going on? I thought Thomas Frank was hosting. <laughs> <laughs> Before we start, uh, Frank says he's very happy at Brentford despite links to Man City job. Speak to tribal football about this, Marcus. Peter, Bella. Peter you've just written that on your, on your, on <laughs> on your, your, on your notes. I've written yeah. it on my hand. <laughs> Just registered the domain name Tribal Football. <laughs> <laughs> Written a note. It's, it's not very it's nature not Tribal same. Football is in the ground. Uh, so I suppose Frank and Guardiola play similar styles of football. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. <laughs> I'm ready. Marcus, I'm excited. Carry this, we can carry this on outside. Um, <laughs> 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 Pete and I were in a fist fight in the car park. He'll <laughs> never go there. Yeah, yeah. Fine, yeah. Honestly, honestly, do sign up to the WhatsApp channel. There's all kind of great content like that. <laughs> so last week, Luke beat Vish to regain the lineal title uh, that he had lost yeah. the week before. But can the newly reformed Pete Posse Fuck. cause an upset I think in his season day? Jim, you are you are the um, the games master today. I and, and I and I believe. Mm. The little bird told me that you have the power to do this. As it's Pete's first it's throw me off the time, <laughs> the, the belt is on offer today. Oh, yeah. is that right? Yeah. It's, you the can inter- the, it's the Intercontinental <laughs> Luke, Luke Moore Trophy. Yeah. Um, no, I, he's got to be here to defend his title, Marcus. All right. Well, you're both cowards. <laughs> it should be more like boxing, shouldn't it? Schisms. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Different belts. Yeah, exactly. So, if you've never heard the game before or never played the game before, speaking of cowards, never played the Pete, game before. Uh, it's a simple game of categories. If you go too slow, I'll play Gary Neville's Orgasm, and that will leave you seven seconds. So the first category, I Pete, I'm going to have you go first. I because feel sick, Jim. I've, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm bad I feel at this. Sick. Well, you don't know that you're bad at it. Until I, I do. You, I tested it last week. I gave um, Sarah the, um, the the clues, the, the questions, and uh, asked whether I and, and tried to see if I could do any of them. I was terrible. I did one round quite well, but the the two are absolutely stinking. So. Well, you'll have some time to text. I've got some time to text. I'm going to get out early, do some texts. The first category is Pete's housemate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get him wrong. The first actual category is right. the 20 most followed clubs on X. Yes. Oh. Globally, right. as reported by CIES in June 2024. So, mm. Peter, you're going to go first. I'm going to go for Real, please. For Real Madrid, mm. that is, of course, correct. I'll have Manchester United. Manchester United, of course, correct as well. Arsenal. Arsenal are there, absolutely. Barca. Barcelona. Man City. Man City, obviously. Liverpool. Yep. <laughs> fine, that's fine. Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea are there. Well, this is not, it's not as easy as it... Uh, uh, Paris Saint Germain. Paris Saint Germain are there indeed. Ooh. 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 Sh- should I get fancy at this point? Oh, I think Andy so. now. Andy now. Yeah, I'm getting fancy. <laughs> <laughs> you do what I'm, you like. I'm thinking I'm, I'm like Al Nasser. Al oh! Nasser. Oh. Too early, Andy. Oh. Yeah, too early. Oh. Al Nasser are not there. Andy Brassel, you are out. Oi. Come Peter. on. Andy, I'm going to go for uh, Al Hilal. Al Hilal. Yeah! Oh! Very good. Power of Mitro. Bloody Very hell. Very good. Mitro's on fire. Juventus. Juventus, he says correctly. Get in there. Uh, we'll go for Inter. Inter. <laughs> Fuckins. <sighs> Chance for the point. Chance for the point, indeed. Um, Tottenham Hotspur. Oh, oh, oh get in there. Oh, well, 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 you want the other ones? Well done, Please. darling. So, Al Ali in Egypt. Ooh. AC Milan. Atletico Madrid. Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund, Corinthians, Fenerbahce, Flamengo, and Galatasaray. So oh, good round. Yeah. You did pretty well there. Beloved Solid. Dortmund, Andy. Always thinking about Cristiano. That's true, true, true. Yeah. true. Yeah. 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 Um, so second category: players who played for Chelsea in Thomas Tuchel's last game as Chelsea manager, which was a one-nil defeat to Dinamo Zagreb in the Champions League in September 2022. We are looking for players who either started or came off the bench. Marcus, you are going to go first. Mason Mount. Mason Mount. Is correct. Conor Gallagher. Conor Gallagher. Oh, God. No, Conor Gallagher. Oh, God. It's on the bench, but he didn't play. Peter. Uh, God, my mind's gone absolutely blank. Whatever you do, don't this. go for Conor Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 this is why I'm bad at this. I've forgotten the uh, play. He bought an expensive house for his mum. Expensive house for his mum. Why can't I remember? <sighs> Just uh, think of a Chelsea player, Pete. You can do this. You've got this. Has a mini. Used to play for Leicester. Ah. Uh, 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 
I know. I fucked it. I've absolutely fucked it. I fucked it. Sorry. You have. Yeah. Mm. You really have. remember a fucking wow. Chelsea player. This is why I don't wow. play. Wow. This is why I don't play. That was. This is why I don't play. I'm stupid of having <laughs> witnessed you do um, that. Why are you having a go at him? You could have a go at Andy as well. It's not the same. <laughs> also, can you say <laughs> Al Hilal? <laughs> Marcus Spello. Oh, whoa! Yeah. Wowzers. Cool. And thank goodness you put the belt on the line 20 seconds before the game started. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is it bad because I was involved? Sweat I think it may have been. Sweat is pouring from my brow after that. <laughs> well, you're going to have to get better at it because you can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> Who could we have had then, Jim? Just, just the starting line. You, yeah, you could. I can't believe Mason Mount was the only mm. answer. You could have had uh, Armando Broya, Ben Shearwell, Cesar Azpilicueta, Christian ah, Pulisic, Hakim Ziyech, Jorginho, Kai Havertz, Kaladu Koulibaly, Kepa Aritza Balaga, yeah. Mark Kukurea, Mateo Kovacic, Pierre Emerick Bamiang, Raheem Sterling, Rhys James, Raheem or Sterling. Wesley Fafana. I don't remember yeah. Raheem Sterling. Mm, James and Shearwell would have. That's yeah. the problem, isn't it? That is the problem. I'm not problem. a big game player, Marcus. No, it's, no. I, it's not your fault, I think, with that one. I mean, the turnover at Chelsea is incredible. <laughs> well, that, that was the only... The, I had two players that I thought, well, they're the only ones who would definitely be there, but oh, I don't know. Hey, look. Hey. It's your debut. It's okay. my debut, yeah. Mm. And I've absolutely shitted it. But it's, 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 it's not about successes or wins it's about having a go it, yeah. is it yeah right he's okay. not gone full woodgate there come no, on exactly. no exactly yeah. no. the journey well, the, the is young. you'll grow to love me <laughs> I'll learn your language <laughs> <laughs> well there we are everybody um, get your languages in to Pete Donaldson uh, and he will indeed love you in return cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel which means you will not miss a single upload